If they would put up on the screen for us Exodus 15, 26, we begin um, a couple of weeks ago on a series we're calling The Lord My Healer. And we want to continue with that this morning. If you haven't been with us, you can get the previous two messages. You can go online, get them, won't cost you anything. If you're in the building, you can go get a CD or it won't cost you anything. But this has been our, our main text. He said, if you'll diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right in His sight, give ear to His commandments and keep all His statutes, I'll put none of these diseases upon thee which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. The Young's literal translation says, I, Jehovah, am healing you, thee. Uh, the CEV, the complete English says, I am the Lord your God and I cure your diseases. The message says, I am God your healer. Some say the Lord your physician. Today's English version says, I am the Lord, the one who heals you. This is one of those great redemptive compound names, Jehovah Rapha. There are others like Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord your righteousness. Jehovah Shama, the Lord who is present or there. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who sees and provides. And how many believe He's, he's still the Lord who's with you? Amen. He's still the Lord who provides. Amen. That never changes. The great I am is still I am. I am the Lord. Well, is he still the Lord who heals? Yes. Is he? Yes. The opinions vary about this subject. But you know, we want to see what our belief is based on. Is it the ideas of men or is it the unchanging Word of God? If he said, I am the Lord that heals you, what should you believe? <coughs> hmm? He is the Lord who heals you. Say it out loud. He is, he is the, Lord the Lord who heals me. Who heals me. The, Lord my healer. the Lord my healer. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Lord. In Psalm 103, Psalm 103 Verse 1 begins by saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless His holy name. Verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Verse 3, Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Is the Lord still the forgiver of all iniquities. Well, when did he quit being the healer of all diseases? Hmm? Why would you believe without exception that it is God's will to forgive all iniquities, but have exceptions and reservations about him healing all diseases? Why would that be? Because most of the church world would be quick to say, yes, he will forgive all iniquities. But they'll turn right around and they'll say, it might not be his will to heal you. Well, why couldn't you say, it might not be his will to forgive you? Why, why wouldn't you say that? If you can say that about one, why couldn't you say it about the other? Well, because of centuries of traditional teaching and talking and thinking, the church doesn't have the same level of faith for healing as it does for forgiveness. Can you see that? Yes. Many of you, not all of you, but many of you, you have heard the Lord will forgive you from the time you were old enough uh -huh. to understand anything. And never did you hear people preach that God might not forgive. That's right. Right? right? 
but you didn't hear that God heals all diseases and it is always his will to heal. You didn't hear that. Well, faith comes by hearing, right? And, and I think sometimes what folks don't realize, when, we, when the scripture says faith comes by hearing, that's not just from hearing a message or two. You see what we just talked about? I'm talking about what you've heard for the last 40 years of your life. Can you see that? That's what builds in you your consciousness of belief. And if you've heard that it's not always his will to heal for 50 years, then it's going to take something to get your mind renewed because that's ingrained in you. And you're going to have to hear something else and you're going to have to hear it on a regular basis. To get that out of you. Does it need to get out of you? Yes. <laughs> Say it out loud. He forgives. He forgives. All, my all my iniquities. And he heals. And he heals. All, all my diseases. My diseases. Are we reading the Bible? Yes. Should we accept the Bible? Yes. He forgives all your iniquities. He heals all. All your diseases. And man, if I, just, if I just kept saying that the rest of the service, it would be time well spent. Yes. Right? Yes. Why? How does faith come? Yes. And your faith is developed where it comes to forgiveness of iniquity. I'm not having to try to convince you. You know, oh, come on, believe. He will forgive you. Oh, I just don't know. He will. I don't know. Sometimes it's not his will. No, it's always his will. I just don't know. I don't feel like I'm forgiven. Yeah, but he will, and he does. Amen. Yeah, but I don't know. You're not struggling with that, but aren't many Christians struggling with the healing part? Oh, yeah, because they have heard from the pulpit. It might not be God's will. It's not always God's will. Often it's not. We don't know why. God's working something out. He's using this disease to teach you something. It's a blessing in disguise. That's a lie from the devil. It's a curse. It's a curse. Sickness is a curse. It robs you of your strength and feeling good. It robs you of your time and your money. It's a thief. I said it's a thief. And enough of it can rob you of the rest of the years of your life. Cause you to leave early. Nothing good about disease. Nothing. Nothing. There is no way, no how, that a sickness or disease is a blessing from the Lord. It's a curse. Any, any serious student of the Bible would, would have to agree. I mean, it's revealed as a curse in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Many, many scriptures that say so. The Bible said Jesus' ministry summed it up like this in the book of Acts. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. The Bible says everybody Jesus healed was oppressed of the devil. Not blessed of God. Well, when did it change that sickness became a blessing? When did that change? Or is it still oppression? Is it still the work of the destroyer and the killer and the thief? Well, if it is and it's not from God and he didn't give it to us, we don't have to receive it. We can resist it. We can stand against it and fight the good fight of faith. Because we have a healer. Amen. Somebody say, I have a healer. I have a healer. Glory to God, I have the healer. In Luke 5, we looked at this last time. <coughs> Luke 5, the man that they brought who was paralyzed that his four friends brought him 
to where Jesus was preaching and they went up on top of the house and tore off the roof and let him down before Jesus. Luke 5, 20 says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. Well, did, were they coming there to get forgiven? I, I don't think they were. <laughs> what were they coming for? Healing. Healing. He's paralyzed. But then Jesus looks at him and says, man, your sins are forgiven you. You know, the Lord will answer your question the way it needs to be answered, not the way you asked it. Hmm? He'll answer the question the way I know uh, when I was working in healing school, Brother Kenneth Hagin's ministry back some years ago, I was there, Phyllis and I were there for 20 years. And uh, so I spent a lot of time in, in the healing school. And uh, it was my, my job and an opportunity to lay hands on people every Thursday. And uh, I didn't know much. I was green in ministry, but I knew it was the anointing that made the difference. Amen. And the anointing destroys the yoke right. and removes the burden. And I, and I knew I didn't know much about it. Didn't feel like I had much. And I needed more. That was my thought. I need more. I need some more anointing. And so I prayed and I prayed. And I prayed and I prayed and I asked the Lord for anointing. Lord, let me just have some more anointing. Uh, yeah, we're going to lay hands on these people. We need the anointing. Give us some more anointing. Finally, after months of this, uh, I was in the speaker's room one day by myself praying, and the Lord spoke to my heart. I don't mean I heard an audible voice, but inside me very distinctly, like he'll speak to any believer if you learn how to listen. He said to me, faithfulness, faithfulness. And uh, I was, I, I, I kind of sat up, and I knew it was him, and I thought, okay, faithfulness. That's interesting. Faith, what are you laughing about? <laughs> Faithfulness. I said, yes, yes, Lord, I'm going, I'm going to think about that and look at that. But, you know, I'm about to go in here and lay hands on people. What I could really use right now is some anointing, some more anointing. <laughs> so I, I kept praying for a while, and, 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 and again, it came up in my spirit. Faithfulness, Keith, faithfulness. I thought, huh, Okay. Well, yes, Lord, uh, I'm going to do a study on faithfulness. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get into this and look at this more. But, you know, it's only five minutes till I go out here <laughs> to lay hands on people. What we could really use right now is some anointing. And, and I didn't realize he's answering my prayer. That's right. See, they came for healing. And what he say to them? Your sins You're forgiven. Right. You might say, well, what's that got to do? Everything. You just didn't know it. And finally, what he helped me to see, when I said, well, what, what does that mean? Obviously, you're answering my, my prayer and my question, but I don't see. He said, son, all of my people receive an anointing when they're filled with the Spirit. Many of them have done nothing with that. Why would they need more? <laughs> I'd never thought of that before. I thought, Wow. Is it true that when, you, when you're filled with the Spirit, you'll receive power? Amen. Is that right? Yeah. After the Holy Ghost has come on you, power to be a witness, right? Yeah. He said many of them have done nothing with that anointing. Why would they need more? What's he saying to me? It's not uh, you said, I, I need anointing, I want anointing. You've got to be faithful with what you have. That's how it increases. It doesn't come by you begging for more. You've got to use and be faithful. Come on, y'all, listen. Be faithful with what you have. Do everything you know with what you have, and he will add to you. He'll give you more. So I, saw, I need to quit this. And he showed me two scriptures to go to, uh, Matthew and, and Luke. And I went there. And so I just sat there and confessed for 30 minutes, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he's anointed me, I'm anointed, and I did everything I knew with the anointing that I had that was on me, and he was faithful. As the years went by, he added to. 
he increased. Hallelujah. So he was answering my prayer. I'm praying for anointing. He's talking to me about faithfulness. And I didn't see it, but he was exactly answering my prayer. Well, these folks come for healing, and what did he do? He said, you're forgiven. Well, then that set off a discussion and a debate amongst all the preachers that were there. And they said, verse 21, the scribes and Pharisees begin to reason. They said, who is this that speaks blasphemies? You know, accusing Jesus of blaspheming. Isn't that something? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And here's something the church has not emphasized. Jesus perceived their thoughts. He answered and said to them, What reason ye uh, in your hearts? Whether is easier to say, Your sins be forgiven you? Or to say, rise up and walk. Jesus connects forgiveness with healing. He connects them. He combines them. He puts them together. Everybody say forgiveness. Forgiveness. And And healing. Most of the modern church has separated these. Haven't they? They've separated them. Jesus did not. And is he he not the same yesterday, today, and forever? If he put them together then, what do you think he's doing now? Jesus preached and ministered forgiveness and healing everywhere he went. Forgiveness and healing. Forgiveness and healing. He didn't do forgiveness only. He didn't do healing only. It was forgiveness and healing. In fact, he's telling them. Which one's easier? I'm glad he didn't say which one's harder. (laughs) He's letting us know neither one of them's hard. Now, if you were having to do the healing, it'd be hard, it'd be impossible. If you were having to do the forgiving, it'd be hard, impossible. You're not having to do either one. All you and I got to do is receive it. And that's easy. Now, the devil tell you it's not. He's a liar. Somebody say, receiving is easy. Say it again. Receiving Receiving. forgiveness Forgiveness. is easy. easy. And receiving healing healing. is just as easy. easy. Both of them's easy. Which one's easier? (laughs) To quote Jesus, which one's which one's easier? To say your sins be forgiven you? Or to say, rise up and walk. And then he uses healing as a proof. He said, verse 24, that you may know that the Son of Man, not Son of God, though he was, yet he's not, he's not saying I'm doing this as God. Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say to you, arise, take up your couch, and go to your house. What's he saying? He's saying, which ones? You say, you're saying, I can't tell him his sins are forgiven. So which one's easier? For me to tell him his sins are forgiven, or to tell him, get up and go, be healed? Which one? So their, their mouths are shut now. They don't know what to say. He's saying, so that you will know the forgiveness is real, you're going to see the healing. Can you see this? How do we know the forgiveness is real? If the Lord can't heal us, how do we know He can forgive us? That's not my reasoning. That's His. Come on, can you see that? Well, he could, but, but he, you know, maybe it's not his will. Well, if it, maybe it's not his will to heal us, maybe it's not his will to forgive us. How do we know? Oh, we know by the Word of God. Well, the same Word of God says all your diseases. Right? Same Word of God says the same thing about both. Which is why he said, which one is easier? The church, because of the influence of the enemy... Even doctrines of devils has divided 
forgiveness from healing, divided and even called those of us who preach healing in error. Hmm? I had a fellow tell me one time, oh, we don't preach all that healing stuff. We just preach the gospel. <laughs> well, if you preach the same gospel Jesus preached and the same gospel Paul preached, people will get forgiven and healed because they got healed in both of those. Hmm? People got faith to be healed from hearing what the Bible calls the gospel that Paul preached. You see it in the book of Acts, those very words. No, it's a matter of believing it. He said that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say to thee, arise, take up your couch, and go to your house. What happened? Verse 25. What happened? Immediately... He rose up before them. He took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And if you're honest, what would you have said? Well, he must be forgiven. He must be forgiven. Right? He must be able to tell him he's forgiven. Why? Because if he can heal him, he can forgive him. If he can forgive him, he can heal him. Jesus combined them. Jesus connected them. Let's go back to what Jesus said. Yes. Right? Let's put them together. He forgives all your iniquities and he heals all your diseases. Come on, say it out loud. He forgives, he forgives. all my iniquities and he heals all my diseases. Oh, glory to God. I, ju I just got a glimpse. I got a glimpse. Healings in our camp. We're going to have more and more healings in our camp. Somebody say, so be it, so be it, so be it. And it's, it's, it shouldn't be shocking. We're preaching it. Right? And faith comes by hearing it. Glory to God. I'm excited about it. Go, they're going to have more and more testimonies to read. Praise be to God. Let's read Isaiah again. We, we were there. <coughs> and in, the, in this uh, teaching, in this series, if I go over some of the same verses again and again, it's not because I have memory problems. <coughs> I'm doing it on purpose. I believe I'm doing it at the leading of the Lord. We need, we need to get things that have been ingrained in people for decades out. Amen. Your mind needs to get renewed, renewed with the Word of God. And the way that happens, faith comes by hearing. And over a period of time, over a period of time. Isaiah 53, verse 1, and I'm reading in the Young's literal translation. Isaiah 53, 1. Who's given credence to that which we heard? And the arm of Jehovah, that's the power of God, uh, on whom has it been revealed? Yea, he comes up as a tender plant before him and as a root out of a dry land. He has no form nor honor when we observe him, nor appearance when we desire him. All Bible scholars that I've ever heard anything about agree. This is talking about Jesus. Isaiah is seeing in the spirit centuries beyond him of the one who would come and take our place. Hallelujah. Uh, he is despised and left of men, a man of pains and acquainted with sickness. Now, now hold on. Jesus never missed it in his earthly walk. And he never opened the door to any kind of effects of sin because he never sinned. So he wasn't sick personally a day of his life. So how was he acquainted with sickness? Well, the same way he was acquainted with sin. He, he received it as our substitute to redeem us. As one hiding the face from us, he is despised and we esteemed him not. He was treated like a criminal. 
Surely our sicknesses he has borne and our pains he has carried them. How many believe the Bible? I said, how many believe the Bible? Come on, say it out loud. Surely my sicknesses he has borne and my pains he has carried them. Glory to God. Glory, is this true or not? Is it true or not? Do you believe it? Surely my sicknesses he has borne and my pains he has carried them. Now if you say, well, my Bible don't read that way. It, it says griefs and sorrows. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I'm reading to you long, Young's Literal. <laughs> the truth is, the uh, uh, translators stumbled when they got to this. Even some of your modern translations relegate it to a footnote. It, it, it came back that one, one group of translators were working together and one of them said, now look, this, these same words are translated sicknesses and pains in other parts of the Old Testament. It's just good translation. And one guy finally said, if we do that, it'll play right into the hand of these divine healing people. <laughs> well, how about it says what it says? Right. And there is no better commentary than the Holy Spirit. Right. What do you mean? Put, uh, hold your place there. Put up Matthew 8, 16. And 17. Matthew 8, 16, when the even was come, they brought unto Jesus many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick, keep reading, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. You reckon where he's quoting from? Exactly where we're reading, Isaiah 53, that it might be fulfilled that which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now the Holy Spirit said that when He was speaking through Isaiah, He said He bore our sicknesses. He would know what He meant. How many think there ain't no better commentary than the Holy Spirit saying, This is what I said? So it is true, Jesus took our infirmities, our weaknesses, and our sicknesses, and He carried our pains. Oh, hallelujah. And it goes on to say, go, go back to Isaiah 53, back where we were. Surely our sicknesses that He has borne, our pains He has carried them, and we, we've esteemed him plagued, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5, he is pierced for our transgressions. Now, do you see that most of the modern church hears this very differently than the previous verse? Hmm? Why would you hear it differently? When most of the church hears this, he was pierced for my transgressions, what do they say? Absolutely. Absolutely. He was bruised for our iniquities. Yes, yes, yes. Did he take our sins? Yes. Did he bear my iniquities? Yes. Did he take my sicknesses? Uh. Well, that's, that's talking about spiritual. Really? But what's the sin part? See, see people try to explain things away because they, they, they haven't heard it. But the Bible does not say one less than the other. Jesus connected them. The Holy Spirit connected them. Isaiah connected them. Matthew connected them. Why don't we connect them? Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> huh? He took my sin. He was pierced for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was on him. This is a part of our of his substitution and our redemption that many have not taken advantage of. You're not supposed to go around with no peace. You're not supposed to be depressed and distracted and anxious and vexed. He took that crown of thorns that they jammed on his head 
was, it was painful in itself, but it was much more going on. It was symbolic of what was happening in the spirit, the, the breaking of our peace, the vexation, the anguish, the, the, the worry, the fear, the panic, all of that came on him too. Why? Because if there'd never been any sin, there would never have been any sickness. And there would never have been any anguish and worry and fear. And there would never have been any poverty. So if you take care of the sin, you take care of all of the fruit of sin. Did Jesus go to the cross, spirit and soul and mind and body? Did he go completely? Did he obtain a redemption for us, spirit and soul and mind and body? He became sin with our sin. He became sick with our sickness. He became poor with our poverty. Am I quoting scriptures? The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Don't you love him, saints? He took everything, everything that was death and destruction on himself, and he bore it. He took it. Somebody say, he took it. He took it. He took it. Nobody made him. Nobody could force him. He, he willingly allowed it to come on him. He took it so as to pay for it so we wouldn't have to. Amen. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is on him and by his bruise. Now this describes the scourging. Did he have to go to the scourging post to go to the cross? No, no he didn't. No. Now he had to do it to get a complete redemption for us. Nothing he did was unnecessary, but he could have gone to the cross without being scourged first. In fact, that was not usual. I mean, the cross is going to kill the person that's condemned to die. Right. What they were trying to do is scourge him and maybe not get him to the cross. The leaders were trying to try to get away from, well, if we scourge him and he looks like he's half dead, well, then they'll be satisfied, but they wasn't satisfied. They yelled, crucify him. But it wasn't by incident or accident. It was part of the plan of God. He was allowing it, and he took upon himself the beating, the, the, the whipping, the scourging, the punishment the results for sin, and the Bible tells us while he was doing that, he took our sicknesses. Amen. Oh, somebody say, he took my sicknesses. He, <laughs> he, he took our sicknesses, he took our weaknesses, he took our pains, and then he went on and, and he took the, 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 the thorns and, and the chastisement of our peace, and then after that, went on to the cross and hung there and became sin with our sin. And then people will look at that with him tied to the whipping post, being scourged and sickness coming on him and saying, is it your will for me to be healed? That's like looking at the cross and saying, is it your will for me to be saved? A foolish thing to say, an ignorant thing to say. Come on, say it out loud. He took, he took my, sicknesses. my sicknesses. He bore. He, bore. he, carried, he carried my pains. My and by his bruise, by his stripes, I am healed. I am healed. Oh, somebody's getting some help today. I am healed. Oh, keep saying it. I am healed. Glory to God. My, my. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, uh, since forgiveness and healing are combined, we understand more about receiving healing than we think we do. Do you know how to receive forgiveness? Yes. Yeah, you do. How did you get forgiven? How many in here believe you're born again? You believe you're saved. You believe your name's in the Lamb's book of life. And you believe that your sins and your failures and your mistakes are not 
held over you and against you, but that you have been and are washed by the blood of the Lamb. Come, come on, how many believe that? Yes. That you, you, your sins are forgiven and all the wrong things that you have done and been are washed away. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. How do you, what, what makes you believe that? How did you get that? How did you get that? Let's, let's go back to when it happened. How did you get that? There was a point where you heard the truth and you believed that you were in need of a Savior and you believed that Jesus is that Savior and that He has paid the price. He, he, he took your sins. He, he took the punishment and He bore it and paid for it. But that alone will not save you. I said, that alone will not save you. What do you mean? You had to go beyond that knowledge and awareness, and you had to receive. Oh, come on, is anybody here? You had to receive Jesus as your Savior. You had to receive Jesus as your Redeemer. Didn't you? And you had to receive that forgiveness that He offered you. And you had to receive that cleansing that the blood provided for you. You had to receive that righteousness that was given to you. Am I telling the truth? Am I telling it right? You had to receive it. How did you receive it? How did you receive it? You received it by faith. By believing, you received it. You believed it in your heart. You said it with your mouth. You said, I, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord. I confess you. I believe in my heart that you, you, you died for my sins and God raised you from the dead. I confess with my mouth, you are my Savior. You are my Lord. You received Jesus as your Savior. Wonder how you receive healing. <laughs> I said, wonder how. Wonder how. Jesus said what? Which one's, which one's easier? They are not different. They are based on the same redemption. They receive the same way. Just like you receive Jesus as your Savior, you must receive Him as your yeah. healer. Yes. You receive Him as your healer. And also you receive the healing that He has bought and paid for and provided as your healer. And how do you do that? How do you do that? How did you receive your forgiveness? You believed you received it. You believed you received it. Now, <clears throat> what if somebody says, I, I don't believe in the Lord, and I'm not receiving all that? Did that make you decide that it's not God's will to, to forgive all? No. What if you meet some Christian that says, you know, I know the Lord said He'd forgive me, but I just don't believe He did, and, and I don't feel like He did. Well, you say, well, yeah, he don't always forgive. We don't know why. No. He's working something out in your... No! No, you know better than that. Well, if we don't base Jesus being the Savior on whether somebody receives forgiveness or not, why do we base Jesus being the healer on whether somebody receives healing or not? Not everybody's going to receive Jesus as Savior. Not everybody's going to receive Jesus as healer, but it doesn't change the everlasting truth that He is the Lord who forgives all your iniquities and who heals all your diseases. I am, He said, the Lord that heals you. Nobody has a right to qualify that, restrict that, change that, 
divide that. Take the theological cleaver of man's philosophy and divide it right in the middle. Yeah, he still forgives all, but no, don't talk about him healing all. Because sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he don't. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says wait a while. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes people say stupid stuff. <laughs> don't let people's confusion and their heralding of the traditions of men rob you of simple, strong faith in the it is written. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise be to God. Somebody say, praise be to God. Praise be to God. Where, where are you? Isaiah? Go to uh, Mark 11, if you would, please. <coughs> Thank you, Father. I'm not planning on keeping you too much longer. But is this important? Is this? I believe it is. I believe it is. Just because somebody didn't receive their forgiveness, we don't decide that the Lord's no longer the Savior. And just because somebody doesn't receive healing, we don't decide that he's no longer the healer. He is the healer, whether people receive it or not. He is the Savior, whether folks receive him or not. All that proves is somebody didn't receive. But uh, one of the things that we, we must get our mind renewed in is that we receive by faith. Not walking by sight. Jesus said in Mark 11 and 24, he describes the, the faith principle so perfectly. Jesus said, therefore I say to you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. Now a lot of people have stopped right there and they've cut off the rest of the verse. And they say, what you need to do is just believe. Just believe, just, just believe. That sounds good, but it's not the rest of the story. Believe what? Receive. Believe what? I don't believe God is good. Yeah, but that won't get you healing. Believe God can do anything. That's wonderful, but that's not what he said believe here. That's not, that won't get you healing. You can believe that God is real. You can believe that Jesus came to the earth died on the cross, paid the price for sins. You can believe he's coming back again and be lost. I said be lost. Why? Because you've never received him as your Lord and Savior. You've never submitted to him as your Savior. How many understand he must be received? Amen. And what he has done must be received. How is it received? Not mentally, not physically, but spiritually by faith. <clears throat> he said, what things ever you desire, when you pray, do what? Believe. Believe specifically that you receive them, them things you just prayed for. You believe that you receive them, then what will happen as a result? And you shall have them. Them what? Them things you prayed for. And them things you believed you received, you'll have them things. This is the principle of faith. The word receive, if you look it up, it means to take. It means to take hold of, to take or to lay hold of. Believe you take it. Faith has hands. 
Faith has hands that take. Now, when symptoms disappear is not when you received your healing. That's the results of receiving your healing. I'm going to say it again two or three times. When your symptoms go away, that's not when you received your healing. That's the results of you receiving your healing. When it comes to forgiveness, you don't feel forgiven and feel righteous and free and then you believe you receive your forgiveness. You receive Jesus as Savior. You believe you receive your forgiveness. And then, after you believe it, your feelings start changing. You feeling clean. You feeling forgiven. You, you being confident that you're saved. That's not when you received your salvation. That's the results of you receiving your salvation. And do you doubt God being the forgiver or our Savior if you made a mistake? You being saved, does that mean you could never miss it? Hmm? And yet could you say, look, would you look here? I missed it again. I must not be saved. Well, if you do, you're in trouble. Huh? Well, why does having some symptoms of sickness mean we don't have a healer and we're not healed? If, that, if that's what that means, then if we make a mistake and we have a sin in our life, we should believe we're not saved and the Lord's not always the Savior. We've learned how to do it with forgiveness. But we hadn't known how to do it with healing, and it is the same. Jesus said, which one's easier? People are all condemned because they got symptoms of sickness in their body. What's wrong? What's wrong? Well, you might as well say, am I a real Christian? Because I, I made three mistakes last year. <laughs> I had symptoms of being an unbeliever. I had a symptom of being unrighteous. I had a symptom of sin. So I must be a sinner. No. No. You're still saved. What do you do? You believe you receive your forgiveness. For this too, you believe you receive your righteousness restored. And that's not about your symptoms of feeling bad over you missing it being there or not being there. You don't wait for your symptoms of feeling bad that you missed it to be gone, then you're going to believe you're forgiven. It's your believing you're forgiven that causes the symptoms of feeling bad that I missed it to change and to leave. We got to do the same thing with healing. Just because you got some symptoms of sickness and problem in your body, there's no reason for you to be condemned. No reason for you to go, what's wrong with me? I don't have faith. I still got symptoms. Well, yeah, we could put a magnifying glass on you and might find some symptoms of you not being righteous. <laughs> but you are. I said you are. You are. Not, we, don't, we don't walk by sight. We don't walk by feelings. We should not. What do you do? My job is not to, to pay for the sin. Jesus paid for it. My job is not to make me righteous and clean. I can't do that. That's why I need a Savior. I, my, that's not my job. Well, nor is it my job to make me healed. Nor is it my job to make the symptoms change. Nor is it my job. So what's my job? My job is to believe that I receive forgiveness and cleansing and righteousness 
and stand fast in it and declare and decree it no matter what I look like or feel like or what you think I look like or feel like. I'm saved whether you think I am or not. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ whether you think I look like it or not. Because the biggest thing it depends on is what he has done and me believing I receive it. That's my whole job is to believe that I receive it and confess it as truth in my life. Well, by the same, and the other stuff, I, I need to ignore it. I need to, to, to not let the enemy bring up things from the past to me. Let, not let him keep pointing out things and trying to put me in condemnation. Well, the same thing is true with healing. The symptoms leaving is not when you received your healing. That happens after you received your healing. Come on, can you see? What things soever you desire, when you pray, do what? Believe that you receive them. Believe that you take them. Believe that you lay hold on them. Then what will happen? And... You shall have them. You'll see it. You'll feel it. The things will change. Amen. It's easy. Oh, somebody say it's easy. it's easy. I don't have to fix a heart problem. I don't have to fix a kidney. I don't have to heal cancer. All I got to do is receive Jesus as my healer. Just like I received him as my Savior and Redeemer, and then receive, just like I receive the forgiveness that my Savior offered me, I receive the healing that my healer offers me, and I say, I believe that I receive healing. Well, you don't look like it. I, if I looked like it, felt like it, I wouldn't need to believe I received it. <laughs> Faith has hands. Healing is bought and paid for. Forgiveness is bought and paid for. Yeah. But it must be received. Yeah. Just like you got, just like people got to receive him as Savior, you got to receive him as healer. Faith has hands that reach out, lay hold of what he's given, and take it to yourself. Not, not, not physical hands, faith hands. But they're real. Whatever it is that's been bugging you, you say, I believe I receive healing for my stomach. I believe I receive healing for my head. I believe I receive. And then be happy about it. Yes. Yeah, but I still hurt. Yeah, I know it. I know it. But the, when, the, when the results occur, that's not when you received it. That happens after you believe you receive it and you'll have it. I believe that I receive healing. Glory to God. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet.